Hey, what's up everybody? So, this idea kind of came out of the blue. Don't know how well it's going to work, but figured I'd give it a try. But, wanted to call this treadmill talks, where I just walk on the treadmill and talk to you guys, and I might actually try and do a live eventually. Why treadmill talks? Well, personally, I don't like walking on the treadmill, not thinking about anything. So I'm always doing something on the treadmill, whether it's listening to music, or listening to an audiobook, or just thinking about life. But there's always something I gotta do because if I'm just sitting there walking in place, it drives me insane. And I'm sure it, it does the same thing to a lot of you who also walk in the treadmill. So, today, got up early morning, I uh, listened to another one of Gemma's poems, very beautiful poem. She talks about how uh, cancer took her aunt and how time can find a way to heal all wounds. And just made me think about my life a lot. My mom personally had cancer. Uh, luckily we caught it very early, breast cancer. She ended up going under the knife, and thank God she's here with us today. But the scary, scary thing about cancer is it's one of those one of those things that I call it the slow killer because you don't know how bad it is. Well, honestly, you don't even know you have it unless you get checked on a regular basis until you really have it. And when you realize that, it's almost too late at that point. I uh, had a couple of my friends die from cancer. And uh, one, of my, one of my personal clients died from it actually at the age of 56. And they caught it way too late. Uh, found out he had lung cancer. And it ended up getting into his brain after about, I think it was around six months. He had been going to chemotherapy. And it just, it came way, way too late. And the way my mind works, it jumps from topic to topic to topic, especially when I'm on the treadmill. So I uh, hope you guys keep up with me. But when I think about cancer, I think about it's something that destroys, but it destroys in such such a dangerous way because just like I said you don't know you have it until it's too late unless you check it you always got to make sure to check it that's the option we have but when we're healthy or we think we're healthy we don't take the time to check and I'm talking about in life in general is we'll do something because we feel okay and because we feel okay, it means we are okay. And that's not always true. And that's where self-reflection comes in. That's where thinking about where you are in your life comes in. That's where me being a father and a husband and a brother and a family member and a friend to many and always taking the time to check myself and know it, am I being good in those roles? Because being good in those roles can be difficult sometimes. So always remember to tell the ones that you care about that you love them because you get so used to seeing them, seeing them on a regular basis. And so you become conditioned to their family. They know I love them. But that's why you got to take the time to say I love you to somebody because you never know when their last day is going to be, you know? Like, you just, you have to chuck along and really, really appreciate every moment you're given. And I'm not talking about in a reactive way. You gotta be proactive with that. You gotta go all in. You, you have to actively, actively appreciate something. Because it's easy to react and appreciate something. Someone dies, that's a reaction. You know, but taking the time to think consciously and realize what an individual has done for you 
and really sitting back and thinking about it and telling them, hey, I appreciate you. That's actively, that's being proactive. And the reason you do it is because it's the best feeling you can get when you tell someone you love them and their, light, their eyes light up because they know you're telling the truth and you're just telling it randomly. You see, these simple, simple things, these simple, simple steps from a child to an adult as I grow older and older and understand how crucial and important these little tiny things really are because it that's sitting back and having self-reflection really makes you realize how important your little moments are and it really makes you look at your personal demons because we all have them we all have personal demons that we have to fight sometimes but the only way a demon grows is if you pretend it's not there. You close your eyes to it. You don't look at it. And that's what that's the same thing with with cancer, honestly. Is if a person pretends they're healthy and they're okay, hey, I'm fine. Hey, I eat junk food, I'm fine. I feel great. Hey, I do this, I'm fine, I feel great. You treat someone wrong, I feel great, they still love me. Treat them wrong again, I feel great, they still love me. Treat them wrong again. I feel great. They still love me. Treat them wrong again. They're done. They don't want to deal with you anymore. And then you blame them. I can't believe they don't love me anymore. They were supposed to always love me. They said they would always love me. Love's an action. Just like anything else. Love's an action. Fear's an action. Hate's an action. But with those actions, you have to work on those actions. And when you work on those actions, you'd be surprised what you can get. I get a lot of free shit. Why do I get it? Because I treat people right. Why do I treat people right? Because it feels good to treat people right. And if that's not your thing, just, just do your best not to hurt people. Sometimes that's not people's thing. They don't want to treat people right. They want to focus on themselves. But honestly, I, I always felt... And I do mean this, I've always felt you're supposed to treat people right. Like, I always, I never had question on that. And when the biological dad, the sperm donor left, you know, I thought you're supposed to treat people right. Why would this man leave me? And then I had a great man step in in his place. And it was an awesome, awesome experience. I couldn't have asked for a better man. And then it made me appreciate both moments, you know? Really appreciate some people are going to love you. Some people are going to hate you. Some people are going to be indifferent towards you. And the only person who has control over how you feel about that is you inside. And my personal demons of I wanted to learn how people react to things, how people think about things, what moves people, what people love, what people hate. And the more research I did, the more I realized, wow, we're a lot more similar than we are different. We're unique. We're each unique. We each have our own personal story. We all might have a limb that's different from another. We might have facial expressions that are a little bit different from another. But when you cut someone, they bleed. When you say something hurtful some, to someone, they hurt. When you say something loving, they feel good. And so my poem about hurt people hurt people, they're sometimes there's a lot of hurting people and they need a lot of love to get to recycle that hurt to get it out of them and that, I guess that's part of my mission statement you know we're, we're recycling any kind of hurt any of us have inside of us and turning it into something a lot more powerful
because hurt doesn't get you anywhere. All you're doing is burying a hole. And you just keep burying that hole deeper and deeper and deeper until you want to get out of it. And I, I don't want people digging holes. I want people climbing mountaintops. I want people being great. I want people realizing their greatness. I want people to be self-aware. I want you to think when you listen. I want you to think, because you gotta think. And when you think, you take action. Thinking is nothing by itself without the action occur. So after you think about something, make sure to take action on that thing and go all out. Now climbing your mountaintop, like I said, it's hard. It's supposed to be. Anything worth having isn't worth isn't meant to be easy. And I'm not gonna say because everybody would have it, everybody can have it. You get to make the choice. You can have your greatness. Everybody has their own personal mountaintop. The problem is everyone's trying to climb everyone else's mountaintop and not their own. Focus on your mountaintop. Where's your mountaintop? It's not too crowded up there. You're special. You're unique. Like I said, we're all similar in a lot of ways. Yeah, we all have a mountaintop we want to climb. But we all, we're all different in one way or another. We all got something unique. So don't look at someone else's mountaintop. Try and climb their mountaintop and say, I tried, it didn't work. No, there is no try. Not in passion. There is no try. Because when you're passionate about something, you don't care. You can get knocked down a thousand times. You can get knocked down a million times. But when you're passionate about something, and you know it, we all got something we're passionate about. What is it? What is it in your life? Your friends? Your family? Your dream car? I don't know. I'm not here to say an individual is vain or not. I'm not here to say what your mountaintop should be. I don't know what you want. All I know is if you're focused on climbing your mountaintop, you don't want to hurt other people. You just don't. When you're feeling good about yourself, going for your goals, going for your ambitions, you don't want to hurt anybody else. My mountaintop is togetherness for everybody. A society functioning together as a team. Because let me tell you, the Americans made it to the moon. Why'd they do it? They were competing against the Russians. And competition can be absolutely healthy. But imagine having competition with just yourself. Not a state, not a country, not a union, not anything else. But competition with what's in here and just climbing it, being great in it, thriving in it. That's the way to go. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do, oh, I already hit 15 minutes. I think I'm gonna go a little bit longer. So, if you stayed with me this long, kudos to you. I don't know, maybe you can listen to this while you're on your treadmill too. I, hopefully it helps you out and makes doing the treadmill a little bit easier for you. But I'm having a blast doing this right now. It's pretty cool. Just sharing my thoughts with you guys. Uh, but like I said, doing a live on this set, I think that would be a lot of fun. That would be a lot of fun. Get a little bit of interaction. Hopefully when I'm trying to interact, I don't trip on the treadmill though. That, that wouldn't be so fun. But we'll see. Here's the thing. Simply put, I'm going to say it loud every single time. We all have something great to offer. We all have something great. We all have something to push for and to strive for. Climb your mountaintop. And if you're not climbing your mountaintop, be honest with yourself. Because cancer is just not a cell mutation. There's cancer in life too. When you don't do what you were purposefully meant to do. When you find the passion that you were meant to do and meant to be put on this world to do. 
And I'm not saying this on, on a biblical sense. I'm just saying individuals in, ge in general. Whether you're atheist, Christian, Hindu, into Buddhism, I don't care what you're into, honestly. Because uh, all I know is if you're doing great things, you don't want to hurt anybody else. And that's what religion's really just teaching at the end of the day. Love one another. Says a bunch of stuff in it, but I've read the Bible, most of it too. And when you break it down and stop looking at the just small, small bits and pieces at the end, and you look at the larger picture, Cain and Abel did this, and Adam and Eve, and sinners, and oh, going to hell, and got to do right, and we weren't born into, we were born into sin, born to do the wrong thing. We were born to be great. That's what we were born to do. Whether it through God's grace or your own, you can believe whatever you want. I'm not here to tell you what you should believe, but I know what it feels like to be great on top of the world. That's what I know what it feels like to be. I've never seen a drug addict say, I, I love being this way. It's an addiction. Heck, never seen a person who was morbidly obese say, I love being this way. No, that's an addiction. No one loves to be addicted to something. People love to come through their challenges, to break through their challenges. That's what people love to do when they do something great and they didn't think they could do it and they question it and it's hard sometimes. That's when happiness comes in. That's when you're just like, wow, this feels pretty good. And you know what? All I want to do is bask in it with you. Doesn't it feel good? I'm glad you're feeling good. I'm glad you climbed your mountaintop. I feel like I've climbed my mountaintop and I'm just going to another mountaintop and I just want to help guide people to, if they've never climbed one, to go out and try it because I've never seen it. Ever seen anyone who I've helped become successful say, Damn it, Cliff, you made me successful. Now, in the moment, in the moment of the thinking, of the processing, of the doing, because I never said even the doing is hard. Holy crap! Once you get to the gym, once you get to the gym, that's the hard part. Bull crap! Not if you're striving for greatness in a certain arena. Not if you're looking to be a professional. A professional, the gym, getting to the gym, that's the easy part. Okay, I turn, put my keys in the ignition, turn it, go to the gym. That's the easy part. The hard part is when your coach is bailing down your throat, talking about how you better suck it up, talking about how you think, you think this is gonna be this easy in the fight? He wants to take your lunch from you. He wants to kill you. Nah, that's when it gets difficult. But every time I get that hand raised, that makes it all worth it. And you know what? Even when I don't get my hand raised, it was all worth it. Because I went 100% every time. 100%. Go all out. Go all in. Be your best. You will fall sometimes, and that is okay. Because when you do, always have the option to get back up. Always have that option, remember that. Whenever you fall, oh, that's awesome. I can get back up, and I'm a little bit stronger than I was last time. So a little bit stronger than I was last time. And then self-reflect, and be proactive. Find your greatness. So, hope you guys enjoyed walking on the treadmill with me, my treadmill talk. Um, keep being blessed, keep enjoying the moment, enjoy the day, self-reflect. Tell someone you love them. Tell someone you haven't told for a while. See how good they feel, see how good you feel. 
It could be in the, the other side of the world for all I know. Give them a call. Let them know. Just so you all know, because I know sometimes I Instagram some of you, sometimes I email some of you, Facebook Messenger, that, that is me every time. I like making people feel good because it makes me feel good when I make others feel good. And I remember so many of you, so many faces. Uh, even trending topic. Some of, you, some of you, I don't know your names because <laughs> I'm pretty sure your name's not trending topic. But hey, be blessed. I know you always text, you, you always send a comment out on my YouTube. You guys are an awesome community. I love you guys. And not only am I trying to make myself grow for, for myself, I try and make myself grow for you guys. For all of you, men and women. Love you guys. And I just think if, if I can make you think just and be a little bit stronger, you're going to pass it on to your kids and they're going to pass it on to their kids. Each generation gets a little bit better. Each generation is supposed to be a little bit better from the last. I want my son to grow up in a world where people are looking out for each other. It might not be everybody, but I'm going to have that wishful thinking anyway. I'm going to try anyway. I'm going to make, make sure he's conscious though and realizes, yeah, there's bad in the world. Yeah, there's people who want to hurt you in the world. But don't hate them. Because when you hate them, you really just turn into that person. Self-reflection of yourself, if you allow it to be. You love them up, you avoid them. You don't go into their presence. They got a lot of crap on them. They got to clean it off, they got to cleanse themselves. But you still wish the best for them. Want the best for each individual, each individual in this world. Because at the end of the day, when enough people know you want the best for them, they'll protect you with their lives. There's not, there's not a better feeling than that. Having a whole group of like-minded people coming together, bonding strong, helping one another, being great together. Honestly, being smart enough to realize Hey, I care about you. You should get this checked. You know what's funny? After my mom had her breast cancer, she talked to me about getting my prostate checked. We don't think about those things until bad things happen to us. You know, my mom loves me to death. And I'm 37 years old. She just said, you know, people get it caught too late. Something so simple. Too late. Don't catch bad things too late, people. Be aware. If you catch it now, it's an easy fix. It's always an easy fix. Even, to, even a powerful foe. Whatever you catch early, you can fix. But if you catch it way, way too late, when it's way over, I don't know about heaven and hell, but I would say that was hell to me trying to catch something and realizing it's too late. Find your greatness now, today. Find it today. Be great. Woo! 25 minutes, baby. Thanks, guys. You make that a breeze. I hope you guys are having a great day. Take care, everyone.